call this meeting of City Council work session to order and put the roll. Council Member Sheldon? Here. Brackman? Here. Karuba? Here. Reynolds? Present. Faulkner? Here. Beckley? Here. Diversa? Here. Russell? Here. And President Bolt? Here. Uh, this time is there an opportunity for the public to speak and then we can like to address the council. Please state your name and address and limit your remarks to five minutes. Right. My name is Robert Sisley. I live at 20 Parker Street, Jamestown, New York. I was here the last city council meeting talking about the deer problem in Jamestown. And uh, I've also spoke to some doctors and they said that the, that the uh, deer tick, um, they've had more cases this year than they've ever had. Uh, more Lyme disease cases. And it's, it's a problem, and now uh, they were talking about having a committee. My, my suggestion is if they can form a committee, have questions before the committee so that they can look into stuff. Because what I'm understanding is last year you had a few council members that bombarded you know, the, the committee with questions the day of the vote, and it wasn't... Uh, uh, you know, it's like they didn't have the answers, and I think that that might have been one of the reasons that we got shot down. What I'm asking and suggesting is that if they do have a committee that can get done this year, get questions early. We've got other places that they said they've been doing it successfully for like 20 years, and they, um, they should be talking to these people Getting, getting answers, but get the questions first. Don't ask at the last second and almost like snowball it and, and bombard these, you know, with questions that people are like, oh, geez, they, they don't know what they're doing, so we better vote it down. They should get the answers, they should get the questions first, early, not when they, not when they go to vote to, to, to kind of confuse everybody else. Get the answers that you need, that's what you need. We've got a very bad deer problem in the city, and we've got to take care of it. It's 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 bad. I mean, I've got. I mean, I can show you pictures. I took pictures of my flowers while well, stems this year. I've got a whole side of my house full of stems because of the deer. I've got hostas that are down to the ground. There's other people in the city that have the same problem. You want a beautiful city, but you're not taking the time to to cure one of the problems. And if you're not one of the solutions, you're part of the problem. And that's all I've got to say. We've got a bad deer problem here. We've got to take care of it. Thank you. Anyone Thank else? you. Anyone else? Can you speak? What's up, champ? 225 Bowling Street, Jamestown, New York. I had a bad hair day, so I got my hat on. Um, I don't want to be a victim of my environment. I want my environment to be a victim of me. Where did that come from? Jack Nicholson, the departed. The first part of that, victim of your environment. People live in areas where they are a victim of their environment. To no fault of their own, they get targeted, they get untargeted. The issue at hand is I've met with you so many times before, and you were late getting behind this gun violence issue. Yes, you've done things. You haven't done enough. You're late with officers on the ground, because if you had done this last year, when I suggested it, we would have them in place now. We're going to bring a noise control guy, officer, after the noise season is over with. Probably come on board after the first of the year, remember. Snowmobiles in the city maybe will be a problem that I don't know. The mayor had a conference, press conference, in the safe house of the city hall. My question is, it's not the city hall that's under siege. It's streets like Prentagast. So why don't we have the press conference away from the crime scene on Prentagast, not in the safe house of City Hall. 
<coughs> now you say you're going to have a public forum on safety. You want to hear from the people. People like me. People not as active as that. I'm going to ask you what you're going to do about it. What is the purpose behind other than this community's public safety? What's more important than that? The mayor said a statement in the press conference, the most important thing. I couldn't agree more. But we've been behind on this. The mayor's first budget only called for one patrol car. Radios, there weren't up to stand. Another action which I can't quite remember. That was tabled. We didn't do anything with that with that first budget. So no, all you did pull, kicking, hoping into the arena of adding more public safety officers. Wonderful. Should have been done before now. And if I have to read the regs again to tell you what you can do with American public rescue money, it's all in there. You're overtime. These officers, detectives that worked all weekend to solve the case or work toward the end of solving of it, that's all reimbursable in American rescue. All of it. Everything from 2021, April 1st till now, dealing with gun violence is reimbursable. So would you rather have the American Rescue Plan pay for this, or you want the taxpayers to pay for it? That's your option right now. Overtime, it's all eligible, all eligible. So what I'm asking now is a more of a commitment above and beyond what you've already done. If there's $10 million still available, I want you to put $2 million in the public safety. And if you can't, I want to know why you don't want to. You're all are going to go up against elections next year. What do you want to be known for? What are your promises? What are you going to talk about? You just don't knock on doors when the election comes. I think all city councilmen should be out in their wards now explaining to the people, are we under siege or are we not under siege? And I don't care about targeting. Targeting affects all of us. My grandson lives on Lakeview Avenue here at the shops. He asked his father if they were fireworks. How are we going to explain all this that, no, they weren't fireworks. Their report's automatic report, <coughs> or probably an automatic pistol. I can't tell you how it's important it is for you to focus on public safety now. Don't for, forget about 2026. Some of you won't even be here. Maybe I won't either. You probably like it that. So anyway, I plead to you again, and I'd like to hear why, and I appreciate what you've done, but it's not enough. It's not enough. Now, surveillance cameras can be put on in every intersection in a high crime area to see who's going in and going out. That could be done. I asked to create a mobile precinct, a mobile precinct, which is a large RV, not some trailer, that can be stationed at certain areas as a deterrent to crime and also as a focal point for the neighbors to get involved with the police department. So you want to spend 300000 on branding the city? Nobody cares about that, really, if you've got a problem with crime and violence in the city. It's more important to have something like that available than it is in terms of branding. I've been through the branding episode. The only people who should be branded are the fellows who get released every day when they do something. I don't know what else I can tell you. Either do it or you don't. But when you have the public forum and the questions are asked, what are you doing about our safety? And the police department is wonderful. They know I backed them all the way through all this. Lobbied city council endlessly for things. <coughs> Finally, some things have happened, but not enough. 20% 20% of $10 million. <coughs> Either got to go big or go home. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to address? Council. Bob Pace, 209 Lincoln Street. Uh, just one question. Quick raise your hands. I know some people have jobs inside City Hall that they could not leave or whatever, or not required to leave. Show of hands. Who was down there Friday? On Friday, yes. On Friday, what, when are we talking about? The shooting. Yeah, but what do you mean down there? Down there. I don't know. It's your ward. I went there. It's your city. Were you down there? 
Yeah, I was. Okay, fine. After, the, after I found out there was a shooting, no. I did go. I was, there was an active crime scene. I was not going down there. No. Oh, I mean, no. I went down, I spoke to the police chief, and I spoke to the former police chief. And I Did got you talk a lot of constituents? No, it was an active crime scene. I'm not going to lie. No, I just talked to the, 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 the I, I've been down there. I've okay. been down there several times. Okay. You asked a question, I answered it. Okay. Okay. I got my answer. Okay. Okay. Anyone else like to speak to counsel? Uh, yeah. Well, it's better at 46 Walker Street. Um, I spoke at the DPW meeting and uh, at the housing committee meeting. Um, back in December, I think it was, I came to the council and the mayor um, and proposed a neighbor liaison position. Um, gave you a paper from Louisiana and gave a little bit more uh, in detail on a, another separate piece of paper. And I had, a, we, have, we haven't <coughs> talked about it, we haven't heard anything about it. Um, and, and I really think that when, when Doug talks about public safety, the word public safety to me means more than police. Uh, public safety to me means more code enforcement officers, means more parks and recreation people. Parks and recreation people now have added two extra things on their, well not yet, the, the skate park's not open, but once that's open, that's going to be an extra thing on their plate. Um, Dan Stone, you know, has a lot on their plate. There's a lot of things that he can't even get to. Um, I've sent the mayor, and all of the council, a video, nine minute video, um, of, of the things that I have noticed in the city. I'm not saying that nobody didn't do their job or that someone's bad or whatever, but over time, there are many signs in the city that are covered by trees. We live in an angry forest. It's a very angry forest. And, and, and I think that when we start to let people continue to do things, guess what they're gonna continue to do? They're con gonna continue to break the law. You know, and, and I feel like, you know, I, I was born, well I wasn't born here, I was born in Dunkirk, raised here in Jamestown, and never in my life have I ever seen it so bad. The crime, the homelessness, the, the traffic violations, everything. And where do we start? You know, like, where do you start? when you write your next budget, you know? The Parks and Recreation Department needs help. They need two or three more people. Crystal needs seven. You know, I don't know where you'd find them, but. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like we, talk about, we talk about public safety. Public safety starts within the home. Jeff said we got a people problem. We don't need police reform, we need people reform. People forgot how to act. These people, I was at Sneakers the other day. The bar opened, I went down to um, see if someone wanted to buy Zappa snacks. And this guy walks down the street, screaming and yelling, flapping his arms, doing all this stuff, tried to get into the bar. The, the woman that was working was filling in for the owner. And I went over and locked the door. And this guy was in the road. We have a serious drug problem. And I don't know when someone's gonna take notice. You know, I don't know. I mean, supposedly we have all these mental health places that are supposed to be helping people, but I don't see it, man. I don't see it. We're, 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 I, I actually think sometimes those places encourage drug problems because all the drug addicts are going and hanging out together. Because I'm, you know, I, I just don't. I just don't know. I mean, this is not the Jamestown that I grew up in, and I know that things have changed. And I know the loud music is uh, insane. And I can't even sit in my living room during the day without hearing Spanish music. I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I love Zumba. I love Spanish music, but I don't want to hear it. If you want to play it that loud, play it in your own home. Because I don't want to hear it. Put a target on my back. I don't care. People won't talk about me. People talk about me all the time. It doesn't matter. Anyway, one thing I would like to ask, and I don't know if it's even anything that can be done. Can there be a curfew put on the city of Jamestown during this time of need? Anybody? I think there is one. 
the curfew exists for, 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 for kids. For yeah. kids. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, we have a serious problem where these kids with guns are 16, 17, 18 years old. They don't care. They don't give a fine nothing. We'd be polite and say, we're alive. But, the and, noise, are, no, noise ordinance is 24 hours a day or not specific times. Yeah, but um, it can't be policed. Under the city code section. Under the city code section, uh, they can issue an appearance ticket at any time under section 1982A of the city code. So there's not specific times for that. One of the council members said there's, there's times for youth when they're supposed to be off the street. Granted, that doesn't always happen. Yes, the noise stuff, I mean, the appearance ticket is issued. Um, that's the way it's always been. It's a non custodial election. So you can't bring them in. Right. I just feel like, you know, if we keep letting kids get away with things as they are, you know, a, a lot of these kids don't have that parent at home maybe that is, is, is making them come in. And, I don't know, I had to get in when the street lights went on. You know, that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, that doesn't happen. We, we, we here in the city have changed. Us older generation are now the older generation. You know, I never thought that I'd say that in my life. But, um, and what, one of the other things too that I've noticed is, um, you know, uh, tinted windows. These cars with tinted windows. I had tinted windows in my car when I lived in Texas because it's legal there. It's not legal in New York State to have killer tint on your windows. When I can't see who's in the driver's seat, that makes me nervous. I don't know about any of y'all, but you know, before this shooting happened on Prendergast, and I saw you look at the time, Tony, I'll, I'll hurry. Um, there were two other shootings in that neighborhood that, that guns were shot. I walked out of my house a week before that first shooting with a friend, I was at my friend's house on Sturges, and I walked out with him, and a car pulled up the street with tinted windows, and the car, like, went like this. And I was scared. For the first time in my life, I was scared to be in Jamestown. And then two weeks later, a week later, shooting, shooting, right around the corner from where my friend's son plays outside till 9 o'clock sometimes. And these shootings are happening during the day. I know, I know that there's no way to stop violence totally. 100%, but we need to be better. And I, I, I really, really, really would like for you guys to read, address privately with me about the neighborhood liaison because I think that it's a great thing. It'd be two positions part-time, two people working with each ward council person. There's 5,000 people in each ward, give or take, because the census ain't right. If you think people are filling out that census correctly, you are you need to go back to school. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Is anyone else? <coughs> yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Gary Mooney, Hotel Jamestown, 110 North Western Street, Sherry. Uh, I've been a resident of Jamestown for five years. I want to address uh, council on this. Uh, safety issue and public uh, shootings. Uh, I am an advocate for public uh, public uh, cameras uh, to uh, record any egress and ingress uh, on major traffic flows, uh, so that if anything nasty like this happens, we can have a a record of what vehicles are entering and exiting the target area uh, or the general area of Jamestown perimeter. Uh, I would like to see this extended to lamp holes <coughs> on major intersections and I would like to see a zoning incentive for private homeowners to in include themselves in a city uh, police registered camera system where the police can access public roadways uh, provided by their
locations. Uh, I just believe that the community can help, really help facilitate this record keeping uh, activity so that when cars are in uh, exit, screeching their wheels, that sort of thing, uh, that would be obvious. But even cooperating with state authorities and the FBI, getting the national trafficking of uh, these moles, mules, uh, so that we can record what's coming into our village, what's coming into our city, and uh, record them when they make their escape. Uh, it's not an invasion of privacy to get a public roadway. Uh, I believe that this is something that should be a permanent part of your police record and referenced to uh, state and federal authorities when available. Uh, thank you for your time. Officer Reinhardt, correct me if I'm wrong, residents are asked to register or notify the police department if they do have cameras on their homes. Uh, it's strictly voluntary just to assist for the purpose of investigations as well, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm, assume, I'm assuming that the pictures uh, ever released the suspect's vehicle the other day um, appears that it came from a residence. I don't know the residence. I'm not going to develop that as I did, but um, obviously that helped the police in identifying that vehicle because of those cameras at home. Very true. Nobody's addressed this back. Is, are you going to be addressing it back later in the meeting as far as what you have done so far? Like whether it's for this gentleman or myself? Are they doing anything about Are they going to do anything about the deer this year? Because uh, from what I understand, is like there's not even going to be a vote about it or anything this year. <coughs> is that true? I, it hasn't been decided because the committee has a meeting. And as we mentioned last time, they're going to be working on it. Nothing's going to happen until the your season would be in the fall anyways, even if decisions were made. It probably would be addressed later in the year. Okay. We discussed that last time you were here, and I discussed it with one of the public council people who stepped up to pick up the ball when it was left off last time. Okay, so, so is there is there a committee assigned to it yet? Or is Not a specific committee, but there, is there going to be a committee assigned to it? There will be a committee. That, that possibly something will happen this year? Something will at least be over some sort of plan to be able to adopt. Okay, thank you. Because the deer actually are also are sick. A friend of mine has a, several deer that come in her backyard, and she, they're sick. Some of them, not all of them, but they're sick. They're lethargic. They're. Um, I actually saw it from my own eyes. Is that the one, the one deer had diarrhea all over it? You know what I mean? Like it's it's not a it's not a good problem. Either. Well, let's do housing first and then we have a guest here. So if you want to go to housing. If you want to do housing, I'll let you do a presentation. Yeah, well, I, I put it under housing. So. Oh, okay. That's what uh, she can do. Well, then why don't we let Tina go okay. first. I will. why we exist, uh, what our mission is, etc., cetera, uh, and some background to uh, where we've come thus far. This year we're celebrating our 10th anniversary. Um, we were created as one of the first five land banks in New York State uh, back in 2012. There are now 28 land banks across the state. 
primarily our mission is to help um, help fight issues of blight in the communities around the county. Um, we work very, very closely with all the municipalities. I would say that I probably spend about 65% of my time with the city of Jamestown and probably another 30% of my time with the city of Dunkirk um, and the balance um, and the balance with uh, the rural communities that, that we try to help with various uh, issues. Um, over the last 10 years, uh, we've had some pretty good successes, I think, that have been shared throughout the county. Um, you know, I really have tremendous support from uh, both citizens and the public sector. I have nothing to complain about there. Um, but, you know, I always say it's one, one house at a time. Um, wish we could do more. Uh, housing is a very, very expensive thing to intervene. Um, we've got critical issues throughout the county, and it's very, very uh, difficult for municipalities to have the resources, uh, much less the land bank. But what we're trying to do is really, really leverage what we're, what we're doing. Uh, to make sure that we're very strategic about our acquisitions, about our dispositions, about our programming, and make sure that we're leveraging not only what the municipalities are spending on, um, on housing issues, but also what other nonprofits are doing. We really try to ensure that we're collaborating and coordinating our efforts uh, with both the public and the private sector. Um, I am coming uh, to the, the Council and, and uh, the Housing Committee with a request for funding for uh, some additional programming. Um, my ask is rather significant probably when you compare it to other programs. However, um, when you look at uh, the size of the issues that we have going on, the amount of collaboration that we have been doing with the city, we have a wonderful partnership here going. And these programs that I'm uh, asking for funding support for will only leverage the programs that the city's doing and what the other uh, housing agencies in the county are, are doing. Um, just for some background in terms of, of our commitment to the city, over the last 10 years, um, we have invested over $11 million into the city of Jamestown. Um, this comes in the form of our sales for rehab program, the number of uh, assessed value that we put back on the tax rolls is around, um, I actually want to say it's um, about 2.5 million in assessed value from our rehab program. And, um, sorry, you can't see anything without the glasses anymore. Um, and, um, about 5.9 million in um, private reinvestment. So when we sell a house to someone, they have to commit to a renovation plan. We're not just selling it like the auction and hoping for the best. Uh, someone has to give us a renovation plan, a renovation budget. That becomes part of their sales contract. So they have to do what they ask, what they say they're gonna do, or we can take the house back and we also have a performance escrow that we hold on that renovation plan until it's completed. Um, so there's a number of clawbacks there that, that we use to just ensure that we, that we get what people promise us. We do try to ensure that we're building home ownership and the programs that I'm talking about today um, are really meant to bolster that and also to help facilitate home buying and home ownership to those communities that really haven't had access to our program and to other home buying opportunities in the past. Um, so we're really trying to uh, try to right that um, ill that's been, been done through years and years of systemic, uh, systemic issues with the banking industry, the housing industry, and in, in general. Uh, we put uh, $2.7 million into the demolition of almost 100 
homes in uh, Jamestown over the past 10 years. We know that there's a glut of uh, structurally unsound and uh, blighted properties that need to come down. Um, they need to come down for safety reasons. They need to come down to, uh, to keep the taxpayers' dollars down and trying to deal with um, the types of illicit activities that are attracted and the fire and safety hazards that come with these derelict properties. Um, so we have made a really big commitment to demolition uh, for that reason, just to make neighborhoods safer and to uh, try to stem the tide of some of the problems that come with vacant and abandoned properties. Um, you know, we don't have to say how these properties affect uh, home values in neighborhoods, but beyond that, they just destabilize a neighborhood and a community. They are a cancer. Um, one bad house on an otherwise good block can bring it all down if you don't take care of it soon enough. So that's what we try to do. We try to maximize our impact by strategically looking at our acquisitions. Um, we get most of our acquisitions through the foreclosure sale, um, through the county, and we work very, very closely with city government to make sure that the homes that we're choosing to have come to us uh, make sense from a strategic standpoint. What, and we have a whole list of criteria that I'd be happy to share with you some other time. Um, but, uh, but we look for those houses that either relate to other programs that are going on, that are close to other houses that we've impacted in that neighborhood so that we can start spreading that impact across the neighborhoods through the city. Um, and we can't do that without the cooperation and the collaboration that we have with the city. Um, the city's been a phenomenal partner thus far, um, and that's why we have sunk so much grant funding into this community and tried our best to be a good partner as well. Um, we need help right now. Uh, we have um, our grant funding for land banks statewide had a funding gap um, where the state didn't have any dedicated funding for us uh, through COVID, after COVID. We had no inventory, so I couldn't generate any sales revenue because I had no houses to sell. Um, we are right now at a standpoint where we do not have demo funding. We still have houses in the pipeline that weren't finished when we ran out of funding. So we have those houses, and we've also um, just picked up um, from this foreclosure, we've picked up 23 more rehabs and 34 more demos uh, to be done. The estimated cost um, for doing 34 demos is about $991,000, um, and that's basically just the cost of demo, and that doesn't even include all the mowing, maintenance, boarding, security. Um, the cost for my rehabs just to hold them until I can sell them for the mowing, security, marketing, etc., cetera, um, is over $110,000. So th these are costs that I'm gonna incur this year, just this year. So my funding request is for uh, the full four years. Um, it will be augmented by the grant funding that I am writing to the state for. They, they have set aside funding, thankfully, for the land banks this year, so we have not gotten the um, funding request except for a small portion of it yet. We're expecting that in the next month or so. Any money that we can show that the city is pledging to the land banks for these programs can be leveraged. My, my demolition funding for the city has been around five to $700,000 a year that I've asked for for grant funding. Demolition isn't cheap. There's no way to make money on demolition. It's, it's money out of pocket, down the drain, um, and you hope for a good outcome by getting a vacant lot back on the tax rolls at a fraction of the cost that the house uh, generated. So, 
it's expensive. Housing interventions are expensive. But what you get out of them, the stability that you bring to a neighborhood, the, um, the confidence building that it brings to a neighborhood, um, the additional investments that it brings to a neighborhood when you see one or two houses start start blossoming on your street, you know, people are gonna start cutting their lawns, they're gonna start painting their houses when they see improvements along their street. Um, that's not gonna happen if they have vacant and abandoned homes um, all along their street. Um, so I'll leave it there for now, but I'm happy to answer questions before, after, during, um, whenever, but I hope you will take this into consideration with the request. Um, the request is basically for several different programs. The largest piece of it is the demolition to help us get through and help us leverage that as we ask for more funding from the state. Um, and then, um, you know, you're familiar with our Hands on Neighborhoods program. We're really looking to expand that. Um, we know it right now is just the cleanup events. It was always meant to be more than that, um, but with COVID, we couldn't do a lot of the one-on-one -on -one, uh, programming that we had really hoped to. Um, our SEPTED program, which you probably haven't heard a whole lot about yet, but hopefully you saw in the paper, Matt was our first graduate, um, actually second graduate, of the SEPTED program. SEPTED stands for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. It's a multidisciplinary approach to crime prevention in the neighborhoods and in the community. Um, Matt went through on a scholarship from the land bank uh, to become certified in SEPTED, and he'll be helping me and the rest of the crew. We're gonna have five uh, certified trainers or practitioners uh, by the time we're, we're done, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, that can do workshops in the neighborhoods and teach both residents and community uh, civic groups, et cetera, how they might make their properties safer by doing some, some fairly um, common sense type things with their landscaping. You know, it's, all, it's about the physical environment and making things safer through your physical environment. Um, so that's part of the expansion of the hands-on program. Our first time home mentoring program is the other element that we're really excited about. Um, we will be creating a, a large volunteer cohort that will uh, offer first time uh, home buyer mentoring. So when people go through their first time home buying course, that kind of helps them become credit worthy, become credit ready and financial, um, financially ready to enter into a mortgage situation and buy their first home. Um, what it doesn't really do for them is really teach them about what it means to be a homeowner and what some of the challenges to home ownership is and how to maintain that asset over time. Home ownership is the core asset that generational wealth is built on. Without owning a home, people are not <coughs> going to pull themselves up by their own straps and get out of poverty. It's just not gonna happen. Um, this is meant to supplement or augment the home ownership programs that the city's doing, the first time home buyer programs that the other home agencies are doing, COI, CRIC, um, People coming out of those programs who do buy their first home will be mentored for the first year. Um, they'll learn things like how to make a home maintenance plan for the long term, how to budget for that home maintenance plan, how to be a good neighbor, how to access community resources when they have an issue. And that mentor will become their go-to person for any issues that they have during that first year. And more likely, like it has done so in Habitat for Humanity, um, they'll become a friend for life and you know a mentor uh, for the long term for, for that person. 
Um, so that's a program that we're really excited about. Um, I know I'm probably going on here. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, the details are, are in your paperwork. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. One question to you. Can the slides the PowerPoint? I'm yeah, I'm really sorry. No. I don't know if I'm the only one who has yeah. yeah, but it would be much it's more challenging. It, it is. Yeah, so I'm happy to send it that, to Tony or um, so whoever can or maybe to get out of We'll get it. Yeah, okay. If you send it to Mikhail, we'll send it for you. Okay. Quick, quick question for you. Sure. Thing. Looking at the analysis of its estimated cost, you have two cost breakdowns for over 200000 one is personnel and you have direct labor. Explain to me direct labor. Is that your staff? Yes. It's direct labor. Yeah, personnel would be, um, yes, salaries, staff salaries. Okay. And the contracts and sub are specifically? That is specifically the people who do the work. That's actually, yeah, for the, um, for the rebates. Um, for the home improvements um, in that program that I was speaking of, um, that would be directly towards paying the home improvement uh, rebates. And that's a matching program um, that would have a not to exceed level of $10,000, um, but it would be matched uh, based on money already spent by the homeowner. I think I got my question answered. Thank you. Thank you. If you have to demolish the home, what's the average cost to do that? According to this, 27000 About 27000 It was more expensive during COVID, like everything else. But um, but overall, I would say that I've been around 27 with some of mine. The number up here is $27,527.78 for 36 demos. I guess what I want to point out is 
even though it may appear that not much is being done, a lot is being done to try to reach out and help these individuals. But um, there's more to come, and people have to be willing to accept the help and accept the terms and conditions sometimes of being housed in situations that they'd rather prefer not to abide by the rules, and that's creating some of the homelessness as well. So um, along with you know, there are health and mental health issues. Uh, it was mentioned that there are agencies that try to do peer support and have tried to reach out and help the individuals. But again, it's a willingness on their part to accept the assistance. Some people have been housed with family or friends and have lost the housing, which is also added to the homelessness issue when they come here. And they have had initial housing, but then lost it, and now they have no so we will continue to be looking at it. I know the mayor has talked about um, this issue as well, and I know there are a number of organizations that continue to meet to try to address the issue of how we handle and how we can help the individuals. There is clearly not enough housing right at this point to support all those individuals, but I know everything is being done to try to help and get them properly housed. With winter months coming up, it will be another issue. And I know there are uh, code blue um, with the police that they will, the sheriff's department will help and assist at their hours, but the ESS is also available. So um, it's not going to be resolved overnight, but it will continue to be addressed in a number of ways through a number of organizations in the city. So that was pretty much the pretty much meeting. So thank you, everybody. Else, unless anybody has questions. I have intentions of going down to the viaduct and talking to some of the individuals down there myself. Um, I think a lot of people like to just look out the window and not address the issue or talk to the people. So I have intentions of going down there talking to some of them and just see what their situations are. Are they from Jamestown? Are they come here from somewhere else? Um, did they have housing? Uh, were they removed? Um, from housing and what the situation is. Uh, I'm not going to leave it up to others to do that. I'm going to do it myself. And if there's any other council member that want to join me, to come down and, and, and have a chat and, and just see how we can help or what their situation is, then, then I would welcome that. But I'm going to go down there and I'm going to check it out for myself. I understand that least for the time being, the viaduct, the individuals are not down there at this point, but they indicated they have gone to another location. They're down there. Right now. They're down there. I, down there. I, I well, no, this, they, is, I, this is what was said today. Go I ahead. came up the hill. The place was empty. There wasn't a bed. There wasn't a chair. There wasn't a crock pot. There wasn't uh, anybody. The police had been there earlier in the day around the lunch hour. And three cars and three officers must have counseled these yeah. folks somewhat and moved them along because at 5.30, they were all gone. And that is I, that is accurate. They're and providing I, I resources. From the mayor's standpoint, as far as I don't want to just shuffle people along right. and, and just and pretend it's not an issue. But I would like to know what we're, what we're dealing with. And I, I don't want to have a conversation with anybody goes off and on a respectful conversation mm -hmm. and an empathetic conversation see you know where where they come from and, and what's going on with their situation um and bill knows this i mean you, you get to know people when you're when you're working as a, an officer on the streets um and obviously we got longer than i have but i don't recognize any of these people um which tells me that they're probably from not from around here because you get to know people who they are Regular. Yes, and, and I, I just, I'm not recognizing faces. Yeah. So I, I guess I want to hear the, the stories for myself and uh, see where that can lead us into this issue. Because if we don't do something about it um, and try to help these people or correct the issues that are going on, um, it's going to continue to get worse and worse. Last night I was down in Comedy Park um, where the Comedy Center has a tent set up um, to do some different venue stuff back there. And someone went into the tent and destroyed a bunch of lighting that was in there, um, which now has to be uh, all tore down and replaced. Um, I, I'm not aware of it. I, I did hear, also hear a story, and this is unconfirmed, that 
there was possibly some homeless individuals that broke into a local restaurant recently um, and made themselves dinner, um, all sat down, said grace, ate, shared a bottle of $300 bottle of wine, um, washed, cleaned up their dishes, put it away, and left, and spent probably hours in this establishment. Um, that's kind of a heartwarming story, but you also can't have people breaking into businesses and committing felony further either. Um, so the issue uh, definitely needs to be addressed. Um, I also plan on reaching um, out to the city mission down on First Street. I do have a phone call to uh, the director there, and I'm going to kind of pick his brain and, and, and see what uh, where he's coming from on this issue. We had quite a few resolutions. Um, I will summarize them as best I can. First resolution was designating an additional $1 million in no sense in ARPA funding for the purpose of a building and property infrastructure improvement program to be administrated through JLDC and Jura. This is ARPA funds. That was passed through finance. Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Maybe Crystal mm -hmm. is at one time you passed this list out with the uh, rubric uh, matrix. I think we were looking for specific projects. What side? I know I, we clarified some of them that they were rebates for some of the COVID issue, but I think some of us on council were looking for actually. What, what these companies, mm -hmm. what, what they were so, actually planning on doing, and I, I see you had a sample of your matrix, but you filled all those out for each one. It, and I can give you all of this if this is what you would. I'm happy to. I we do have a JLDC meeting um, yeah. coming up to go through these. I don't know if we need all the minutia <laughs> on that, but maybe what the project is. You know, I think it, just a couple lines somewhere. I got gotcha. you. Okay. You know, the Dawson awesome Metal or um, you know, the Sauce, they, they're not getting mm. rebates or partial mm -hmm. rebates, but are they putting awnings up, new tables, chairs? Are they uh, paying down their. I got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Here you go. I don't know if we need them all. Yeah. We were looking for a little. Well, one was prepared for JLBC, so we'll get that out to the city council. I, I got it right here. Um, one is specifically for manufacturers, and then one is split into the other um, service industry restaurants, that sort of thing. It, this is super basic. It's just a one line that says specifically what it is. Um, I can get you more of a, like a narrative. I think for many of these projects, you're not talking about a lot of complicated things. It's basic things, yeah. Oh, no, that's fine. suggest if you have any more specific common, uh, questions or details that you need personally and you're not a member of the JLDC that you reach out to Crystal and ask for that information. Cool. Okay. Resolution number two, designating an additional $2 million in no sense in ARPA funding communities and neighborhood funds for the purpose of funding the roof, private sewer, lateral, private water line repair, 
replacement program administered through the JLDC and the Jamestown Urban Renewal Agency. This, um, many of us have heard from many constituents who uh, were on the list and wanted and requested us to approve additional funding, so I'm happy to say that that did pass through finance. Just a quick question on that. What was the, um, I the mayor, Crystal, what was the total dollar amount, again, for the need for the request application? The roofing? Um, it yeah. was so it was a little bit more than I think the two million will fill. Right. Um, give me one second and I can tell you. But that was before you den denied some of them, I think. Was that, um, was that yes, part? that's even after. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, it obviously far exceeded. I may have to go look that up. Yes. Sir, we, oh, we, we, for the exact amount, we've already approved how much? Seven hundred fifty thousand. Right. Yeah. So this will bring the total to two point two point seven five million. Yeah, and the, actually now it's coming back to me. The, the need was about 2.9. Um, so this will get us very, very close. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This will cover the remaining ones that were on that side. Yeah. Ones ahead of the curve. And just for the, the media and the public that might be watching it, I did feel some phone calls in the last couple of weeks along with the uh, as far as people that might have been denied and their, their requests were questionable and their, um, I suggest that those people if, if this resolution passes mm -hmm. um, later on in the month I recommend that you uh, make phone calls and continue to uh, to push to have your, your project done if, if this amount uh, passes so if you were denied the first time or if it was questionable um, please uh, Please make some phone calls or, or ask for your application to look at it again. Can I say yes, something? Please don't call. <laughs> if you were denied, you will. This will allow us to approve all of those maybes. Okay. Anyone that was denied specifically because they were ineligible are still ineligible. Okay. Uh, for whatever the reasons right. are, we do have the spreadsheet that explains, and, and that was only a handful. It was a, a very small amount. Anybody that was a maybe, they're already going to be approved. I know one gentleman who called me he was complaining that he felt that if, that his roof should have been looked at while someone was home, and that he should have been able to speak to someone uh, rather than someone just coming by looking at taking some pictures and mm. and, and, and moving on. So, <coughs> yeah, I, I'll be honest, the roofs. Everybody that needed a roof, either they really needed a roof or there were a few that were somewhat questionable, sure. but the roofs were, I mean, the, the roofs are a big, big problem here. So sure, I mean, I explained were, to them that yeah. if, if the shingles were 15 or 20 years old, but they still looked okay, someone that has a hole in the roof and has an extra yes. deep yeah. the ones that were going to be approved. Yeah, the first 30 applications that were approved in the initial round were desperate. Need. Severe, yes. Very, very severe. The majority of them had tarps. Yes. Over and holes. Yeah. That's the types of roofs they initially approved. And that's why we pushed so hard to, to request additional funding because the, the need is real. This program will help a lot of people. So, thank you. And for the record, this will be voted on next week. Next week. Okay, resolution number three, that the Jamestown City Council designates $750,000 in no sums in American Rescue Plan Act neighborhood stabilization funds for the purpose of creating a permanent 19A home ownership program. Um, this was tabled in essence for some more information to come from the Corporation Council and Assistant Corporation Council. We had some questions um, on this and we want to make sure that the city's interests are protected on that as well. 
it just for clarification if he, if he has that information on the business. I'm not sure. I guess wasn't an indication of that, so I don't know. Answer that. I, didn't, I don't know where the stands on getting that all together. I would probably do it before lunch tomorrow. We can get it done. Okay. <clears throat> Resolution number four designating up to $300,000 to pay for sorry. And no sense in American Rescue Plan Act economic development funds for the purpose of funding the citywide marketing and rebranding campaign to be administered through the Jamestown Local Quick Development Corporation, Jamestown Urban Renewal Agency. This did not pass finance at all, so it's not coming out of our committee. Can I speak to that, Madam Chairperson? Uh, mm -hmm. um, is there another way for that to be made? able to be voted on. Is there another committee that it's been Someone can for? bring it through as a new business resolution or bring it forward, but um, well, I, will, I will tell you the finance committee felt with all the problems that we have going on between homes and public safety that we would rather see that money go directly to that way. I don't think if I can just talk for a minute, you might have seen the letter from I believe John Whitaker, mm -hmm. uh, the editorial talking about some heyday uh, programs that may have been done primarily to push downtown and to push the Comedy Center and all that it has to offer uh, here in our great city and reaching out uh, into the Netherlands to try to get people to come here. I think the intent for this branding initiative is more to be positive, to sell what we have that is good. Our businesses, our BPU, our schools, our public safety, our fire, and our very inexpensive housing. Uh, taxes, I guess, is a, is a negative, but we need to start twisting things, spinning things, that this is a great city, it's a great place to be, and I don't, we're not gonna hire a person. You've seen social media do amazing things with 20 year olds sitting in their basement making millions of dollars on podcasts. I just, I, I really think that that this 300,000 represents 1% of this ARPA money. And everything seems to be putting fires out and fixing things and spending money on capital projects. I really truly believe that this brain initiative, uh, it, no matter how it's laid out and who does it, is a matter to, to, to find out. But I think it's an opportunity for us to really sell the positiveness of what this city represents. I know uh, John mentioned the failure of the last two with need of hundreds of thousands of marketing dollars. Well, I don't think you need that in today's age with all the social media that's available. Uh, so I'm a big proponent of trying to spend the good that we have to offer, not only our residents, but those who may become our residents or move their factories here, whether it's for cheap electricity, or for a uh, building site that's available and get in, uh, even with <laughs> Gina's business and the Lane Bank business, uh, I had the good fortune of working uh, a deal. But I, I really think we shouldn't just not have a discussion on it. So maybe uh, maybe it'll be brought up for new business. Well, I, I, I beg to differ on that point because the point about public safety and blighted houses, no matter what you put out there, if that's the first impression of what people see, it's not going to encourage them to come here. Well, not, that won't be part of this. Uh, I, yeah, I know, but if somebody drives there to look to come live here, and the first thing they see is some of the conditions of the gateways coming down North Main Street, do you think they're going to really want to move here because everybody said everything's great? I, 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 that, that's my problem with spending yeah. money. When we have blighted houses, homes that need to be done, homes that need to be repaired, and people can't afford it, to spend money on this, when it, it might do 30 more roofs. Um, it might help somebody get uh, you know, something else, the porch that's falling down the stairs. There are a lot of things that are not attractive to people coming through and putting out an image of this is great, everything's wonderful. 
is for nothing when people ask me about it too, and you hear it from a number of people talking about it. So that's my that's my argument against this, is that branding will not fix what people see when they come here. No matter where they come from out of town or live here, I've been getting complaints for over a year about the housing conditions. Everybody that confronts me is like, what are you doing about the housing, the conditions of housing, the poor conditions of houses on their streets, around the corner, um, but we're making headway in that regard. I, I can tell you what Gino is talking about, what everything that's going in the Department of Development isn't going to fix half of what needs to get fixed here. And you've got homeless people that we can't house. That's what people are seeing right now. Branding isn't going to change that. Okay. Okay. Thank Any other questions on that? Okay. Resolution number five is that Officer Jeremy Maggio and Alexis Carlson are authorized to attend the DCJS School Resource Officer course to be held August 21st through August 26, 2022 in Mount Morris, New York with meals, lodging, and gas expenses paid pursuant to Section 77B of the General Municipal Laws of the State of New York. And this is funded through the Jamestown Police Department budgetary funds. That was approved. Resolution number six, the mayor is authorized to execute change order number one with R. Patty Concrete Excavating LLC of Jamestown for concrete work on May Street to Camp Street to East Virginia Boulevard in the amounts of increasing uh, concrete curb and gutter for a total increase in the change order dated August 17, 2022 of $146,700 in no cents, subject to the approval of the Corporation Council as before, and this is funded through CHIPS. It's approved. Resolution number seven is resolved that the mayor is authorized to execute an agreement with signature paving and seal coating of Jamestown for Concrete Work 2022 on Gwendolyn Avenue, based on the bid opening of August 3rd, 2022, for a total bid amount of $174,900 and no cents, subject to the approval of the Corporation Council as to form, and this is funded through ARPA. That was approved. Number eight, City of Jamestown and its bidding process for the purchase of motor oils and lubricants used in the city vehicles and equipment. The City of Jamestown has determined that in an effort to control costs and for predictable budgeting, therefore be it resolved that the Director of Public Works is authorized to purchase motor oils and other lubricants from Superior Lubricants of North Tonawanda, effective September 1, 2022 through August 31st, 2024, with the option to extend the pricing through August 31st, 2025, subject to the approval of the Corporation Council as to form, and this is a general fund budget expense over the course of the years. That was approved. Resolutions nine and 10 are going to fall into, um, we had some more questions, not that we didn't approve the, um, the whole process. Um, council has suggested to the controller that uh, with a given concerns hitting the contingency that we reduce the amount out of the contingency to 75,000 on resolution number nine and that we increase um, what's coming out of ARPA. Mm -hmm. Um, concern is with the expenses, I, as you all will hear, our sales tax was down, the increase in costs, just a general over concern of not attacking the entire contingency and leaving us in a situation at the end of the year. So those are going to be revised and rewritten as such and introduced as new business for the voting session. So you will all see those come under new business. And was there already money in the budget for this? Because those two amounts do not equal. Rescue plan funds that already been yeah. approved. Mm -hmm. It came in. It came in higher, higher because of asbestos. Uh, yeah. okay. So this is just an increase in, uh, in the ARPA funds, and then also a little bit that seventy five thousand out of the contingency fund. Thank you. So it's to make up.
past finance, it's just a little reworking of the numbers between the two. Resolution number 11 is that the mayor is authorized to execute an agreement with Paramount Roofing of Falconer for the Parks Department roof replacement based on the bid opening of May 11. The total amount is $445,650 and no cents, subject to the approval of the Corporation Council as to form. That was approved. Resolution number 12 um, is for <clears throat> a hiring freeze that currently exists to release that to, to, re, uh, to fill a vacancy in the Department of Public Works for a laborer. This position is vacant due to the result of a transfer, and there were some questions raised, so we are calling for an executive session for council after on um, personnel. I have that on my list, yep. Okay. And then the other two items we have are informational only. Um, I will touch on the first one, and I'll let him John touch on the rest. In your package, you all had an update of the ARPA funding of all that has been approved and all that is new projects for this week for a total spend of $19,831,713,000. A lot more to go. <laughs> so roughly about $10 million left. Um, that does include the $300,000 that was not approved through finance. Okay, and then right, uh, John, I'll let you speak on the uh, we're just uh, a little shy of meeting our goal for what we projected for the previous year. We're down, uh, but overall for the half the year we are up $59,000. Uh, for the entire year, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> for the entire year we've collected 47.6% of our quarterly budget so far for the half the year compared to last year where we collected 56.8% at the same time. We did, however, increase the amount uh, that we were projecting to receive, so that does skew it slightly. So basically, the second quarter, we, um, the first we're, quarter, so we're still slightly ahead of budget. Still ahead. Yeah. So I guess the big concern is with everything going on, what the third quarter will look like. It's hard to tell which direction we're going in for the rest of the year. So that's kind of a not saying it's a red flag, but it's, you it's know, an it's, indicator a, it's the cautious. first time in several quarters that we've seen a, a slight decrease compared to the last couple of years where it's been ticking up. Right. That was it out of finance. Okay. And we'll move on to public safety, right? I unfortunately will give you guys a chance to win because I will not be in town. You won't be there. Oh, we'll be out of town. Oh, we did have Police uh, Chief Jackson did announce that two suspects are being held in custody for the fatal shooting that occurred Friday at North Avenue. The charges are still being worked out with the district attorney's office, and more information will be coming. And, uh, we did have a round of applause from the people that were at public safety. Thankful for the good work and quick arrest made by our officers and detectives. Please work on that. All we can. I'd like to thank Mr. Pace and Mr. Champ for showing up and uh, speaking about the violence in the city, the gun violence, the issues. Um, 
obviously you can see I'm frustrated about the situation here. Um, this is our city, and people shouldn't be coming here and thinking they can do what they want with our city. And uh, we need to take it back. That's the bottom line. Neighborhood, and it's got to start neighborhood by neighborhood, block by block, and basically tell these people that are coming here to sell their drugs, that are bringing their guns, you're not welcome here, and we're going to push you out of here. And that means a zero, if we have to engage in a zero tolerance policy, making arrests, target patrols. Um, well, like I said earlier, we have to have help from the public. Um, I know people are nervous about coming forward, providing information. I use the term that was, I often heard on the street from people, snitches get stitches, people are afraid to come forward. But if an entire block or neighborhood bands together, um, they can't come after everyone. You know, they can't come after an entire city block in retaliation if we all stick together and work together on these issues and just basically say, you're not welcome here in Jamestown, and we're pushing you out. The resolutions in the uh, Public Works Committee were also covered in finance, and uh, we approved all of them with the respect of the tweaking for the, uh, for the roof and the Parks Department. So uh, there was a Missy Patanini spoke to us. Uh, she had some concerns, and uh, one of them was she wanted to know if there was a chance for a study for a roundabout intersection at uh, two of them, she was wondering about. One at the intersection of Baker and Hazel County right at Purcell School, and the other one would be at Buffalo Street and East 2nd. Uh, and there was concerns. We talked to the director, and... Uh, you know, pedestrian crossing is always tricky with roundabouts. So um, we will at least discuss it further. I mean, it's a big undertaking. You've got to have land acquisitions and and uh, get the state involved for sure. But uh, she had mentioned that, and it's something that we can at least discuss in the future. But other than that, I believe that. The public forum um, the other night in the press conference, we've been talking about having a public forum. I would want to set the date on that. Uh, it's going to be September 14th, which is a Wednesday. We're still working out details as to the exact time and location. Um, the purpose of the forum, and I, really, I was planning on calling this before, uh, and of course now I think there's a little bit more sense of urgency with, with the recent uptick in, in gun violence in particular. I've asked the Director of Development as well as the Police Chief to be there, talk about issues, specifically neighborhood issues, housing issues, many of the things we've touched upon tonight, uh, and the Police Chief can talk about targeted areas, what's being done, what can be done in the future, what more can we do, just to have more of an open dialogue. I know at our work sessions and voting sessions, we have such large agendas that we have to get through that you know, people have five minutes and it's kind of back and forth and we don't have a lot of time to have dialogue. So the purpose of the forum is to get as much information out uh, from the mayor, from the department heads that are there if possible. Council people are obviously invited to be there uh, to chime in, answer questions, make comments. But it gives the public a chance to ask questions and have more dialogue uh, with the administration as well as the council and to get information out there about what's going on, what's not going on, and what steps can we move take moving forward. Um, and, and as I said the other night, you know, this is not just a Jamestown problem, this is a state problem. It's a nationwide problem. If you look at every city in this country and across the state, there's been a huge uptick in violence, violent crime, gun crime. And there's, you know, we can point fingers all we want, and this is a 
you know, it's a complex issue, but what are we going to do here in Jamestown? What can we do to at least deal with it and work on it moving forward? And so that's the purpose of the forum is to get people to have a chance to answer, to ask questions, get answers, um, see what's going on, see what more we can do so in the next few weeks we can, you know, put together some plans and, and moving forward what we can do. So there'll be more uh, information coming out. We'll still have to... Uh, you know, figure out exactly where and what time and, and so on and so forth. So more will come out. We'll probably have an announcement next week's voting session on that. Thank you. It might be worth adding the Buffalo paper today. Where gun violence starts to drop in Buffalo per the new technique and hot spots. And what they are finding that in spite of the shooting of cops, their numbers have gone down and they've gone back to foot patrols that they have actually started to get officers in the hot spots to try to talk to the residents, to encourage relationship building again. And I think uh, Doug Camp mentioned it, having at one time they had a substation out in on Main Street. And maybe this is, you know, it wouldn't hurt, it would not hurt to get somebody from that police department to also come down and talk about what's working for them because I had no idea, and I would not have believed it, but that included the 10 people who were shot at Fox. Their numbers are still dropping in Buffalo. So. I mean, just to follow up on that, I mean, you know, the, the state, um, they can pass all the gun laws they want. And more than that, it's, gonna, it's going to affect the legal gun owner, the gun owner that's responsible, some of these people are they're criminals. They don't care about the law. <laughs> they, they don't care about what laws um, come from Albany. They're still going to get their guns. Um, a little reminder of Officer David Mitchell that was shot in 1999, was shot by a gun that was stolen out of a burglary. It went uh, passed through four or five, six different hands, made it into the hands of James Lewis, who then turned around and shot uh, Officer Mitchell. So criminals don't care about laws. Mm -hmm. That's why they're criminals. Um, so we can pass all the gun laws we want, but that doesn't matter. What's disheartening to me, and I said this earlier, prior to the council all convening together, is when we have someone that shoots multiple rounds into a car in the city, and I know this drum has been beat many times, but shoots multiple rounds into a car that's fleeing, and the individual that shoots those rounds into a car is released 13 hours later. 13 hours later, after pumping multiple rounds into a car, this person that is clearly a danger to society is walking our streets. And this is happening time and time and time again with a new bail reform. I understand that the bail reform was not... I understand why it happened. Bail was never set up as a punishment. It wasn't meant to be a punishment uh, towards people who were sent to jail. But with this bail reform that happened, they went too far. We have people that are dangerous to our community, that are committing felonies, multiple felonies, and they're getting out of jail hours later, and that are walking our streets again. Something needs to be done on a state level. The governor had a possibility to change this, she chose not to. People should be ringing her phone and knocking on her door to repeal some of this bail reform. We, the citizens, are now becoming the victims of this bail reform because nothing's being done. Hello everyone, uh, Councilman Russell, there's a congressional seat open, uh, currently open, so if you want to jump in, uh, the water's hot right now. Oh, there's a meeting. Maybe the election's tomorrow. That's a good point. Don't forget there is an election tomorrow, a uh, special election. And the primary. And the primary, all at the same time. Uh, I just wanted to provide a couple updates, and I have a couple other folks that will uh, uh, add some uh, information uh, to you all. Um, first and foremost, uh, I was asked uh, specifically about the homelessness problem. I know, uh, Councilman Eflin, you'd 
uh, raised it. Uh, Councilman Russell, I want to thank you for being, being willing to go in and talk to folks. There's a couple things that I want to address. As uh, Councilwoman Karuba had mentioned, there's a challenge that we are facing now that we've not seen in a very long time, which is the issue of rent and people being evicted from their apartments. Uh, we have an issue of the location of the city compared to other things, our cost of living, our weather, and shelters being at capacity right now. So you have the perfect storm of uh, people that are existing on our streets. The one thing that I would also note is that when you go, uh, Councilman Russell, and you do talk to these folks, you will find that the majority of them are families. They are not originally from Jamestown. They have found themselves in Jamestown for some reason or other uh, and don't have a place to go because there are shelters that won't take families or you have to separate or they have an animal that they don't want to give up, right? Uh, but I want to just talk to you briefly about the actions that we are taking as a city to address this issue. Um, first and foremost, as you've noted, you all noted that we have uh, had uh, times where we have moved individuals out of areas. Uh, but keep in mind, every time you shift someone out of an area, they go somewhere else, right? So we're seeing folks as we shift out of more visible areas, you're seeing more people end up in our parks. You're seeing more people end up under other areas. Uh, and so we're trying very hard to try to keep up with that. At the same time, we're providing resources. You mentioned uh, the beat patrols. We send out uh, foot patrols down to provide resources. We also work with our partners at COI, with the UK Mission, uh, with uh, the Salvation Army Domestic Violence, uh, and others uh, who have also gone down there, talked to those individuals, provided them resources. We've also been working with the county for individuals that uh, may be here and don't have the <coughs> funds to get back to wherever they wanted to go. There's a special fund designated by the county uh, that will provide them a, a ticket, a bus ticket uh, to wherever they need to go. So um, on top of all of that, we're working with the shelters whenever there's any open available bed. Uh, I also want to note that in early September, it looks like we're getting closer to finding a time to bring the county's homelessness coalition directly here to Jamestown for an in-person meeting. Uh, we have a coalition, Councilwoman Karuba, as you had mentioned, and we wanted to make sure that we engage them. Their entire goal has really been to focus on funding and on-the-ground support. And so I personally went to that group and made a plea and said, you need to be in Jamestown. Right? What, are, what good are you as a group if you are not physically here helping the people that we have? So we will be convening a meeting of that group um, once we have that date set, which should be uh, by tomorrow. Uh, we will invite all of you uh, to join. We will also be inviting our, our churches, which have played an active part uh, in supporting some of this work. Um, and I also want to note one other action is that we have seen churches come in and feed various homeless populations, preach, provide services. Uh, those churches uh, we have spoken to, we've met with, they've moved services away um, from those areas and provide them in a much more safer location. Uh, so they're still able to do some of the missionary work they're looking to do and provide the support. Uh, but we, we can't have them hanging out in certain areas uh, that are really going to impact where people are staying, right? Areas that are really are unsafe, especially near the viaduct when we have uh, buildings that could potentially fall down. There's a reason why we block some of those things there. Uh, so we're doing everything that we can uh, to try to move people out, provide resources, and support them. And the same token, I encourage you all to talk to those individuals. Uh, I've done it. I encourage you all to do it. And if you have any suggestions or solutions, please let us know. We're trying to do the best we can. Uh, we have some great staff members on our Parks Department, DPW, that have been out there trying to help individuals that have cleaned up, that have tried to uh, improve the area. But there's only so much that uh, we can do at the same time. Um, so I appreciate whenever you all uh, provide me updates, I'm able to get those to our staff and we're working uh, diligently to make sure that we are compassionate for those folks that are there, but also to protect uh, public safety and the public uh, in those areas. I will note, just to give you an update on the viaduct area, which has been the major one most people have looked at, uh, a council, uh, 
Councilman Reynolds. Uh, Councilman Reynolds, uh, I was just going to call you Bill there for a minute, I apologize. <laughs> Councilman Reynolds, um, and uh, you had mentioned a bit about that area today. We, uh, we did have our, uh, our foot patrol go down and provide resources for individuals, move them out of the area. We had BPU assist us in cleaning up uh, that area. We're working directly with the um, railroad about potential lighting uh, in that area that goes hand in hand with the SEPTED. Uh, uh, the view that we're talking about. Um, so I want you all to know we are working on it. Uh, we're working diligently on it. I don't have a good answer. And the more I talk to other mayors that have done this uh, in areas that have a much larger uh, homelessness population under much larger bridges and areas, um, they don't have a very good answer either. So we're trying the best we can uh, to support those folks as well as uh, protect those areas. Okay. And I can say that when I run the river walk, I now have a new nickname when they sit on the benches, they call me Boris, so. At least they're not offering you a box of chocolates. No. <laughs> and I do see a, a lot of them, you know, laying on the river walk in that area. And on the benches and just the water. Uh, so if, if there are any other questions on that, please let me know, otherwise we will invite you all uh, to have that, to sit down and join us with the Homelessness Coalition. A uh, couple other brief updates, and then I'd like to talk, I'd like to uh, bring Lisa up to talk a bit about the Senior Housing uh, Rescue Plan Program. Um, first and foremost, you may have heard that the Inflation Reduction Act uh, has been passed on a federal level. Uh, we are still waiting to just uh, better understand how any funding could potentially flow to the city uh, through that legislation. Uh, it was recently passed, we're still trying to figure out how that's going to happen, but we will keep you all up to date as we start to see other federal funding opportunities come into play due to that legislation. Um, some of that in particular, uh, Councilman Karuba uh, does have funding for uh, climate change, which can be used for stormwater management and uh, other, other concerns you've brought up in, uh, over the years. So, Thank you. Yep. Uh, I didn't bring it up. Up yes. Me, yep. so yes. So uh, there is some funding in there. Where to get to that. Uh, the other thing to note on a New York State level, uh, you may have seen the email I sent you about speed zones, uh, in particular the speed limit. Uh, New York State has now allowed municipalities, uh, towns, and villages to lower their speed limit as low as 25 miles per hour. Uh, this is not in a school zone. Those are still considered separate. Uh, so if there is any uh, indication or inkling from the council to start to look at that, that would have to be a local law that would be passed that would change our speed zones from 30 down to 25 or some mixture in between. Uh, some communities have. Places like Ithaca have been trying to change their speed zones to about 20, but the, high, the lowest they can go now is 25 under, under the new New York State law. Okay. So if there's any, any thoughts on that, now's the time to discuss it. Uh, there's no specific time limit that I'm aware of. This can happen any time passing home rule legislation that could allow us to change those, those speed limits. Right. Uh, and I do want to uh, bring in, I've got just a couple more items. Uh, Lisa Volpe is here to talk briefly about the senior housing program, which we have received a tremendous amount of applications. This is for folks that have the aged or enhanced tax exemption and were eligible uh, for uh, repairs to their home. Lisa, if you want to give us an update to, this, to the council. Yeah. Um, we had you want to stand up, they probably can't. can hear you. We had 296 applicants for a total of $1,791,000, of which I have 500 that we can spend now. Um, I don't know, were we going to discuss the other 500,000 tonight? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. We'll just, oh, okay. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, nope, that was it. So of, of that number, 296, 27 are an agent exemption, which means that they're below the 21,000. 22,000. Below 22,000. 269 are an enhanced star, so they meet the age threshold and under 92,000. Okay. Um, of those uh, applications, the 296, 13 
had applied for the roofing program and will most likely get the roofing program, so we may pull them out of this program. Uh, and we have from that list, that 296, uh, 32 disabled seniors and 46 indicated they have chronic illness, um, difficulty moving. Okay. Uh, again, 1.7 million, we only have 500,000. We have enough in the first uh, tranche of the 500,000 to do all of the aged exemptions, so individuals that are under the 22,000 uh, threshold. Uh, we're still talking about what to do with the rest uh, to accomplish all of those. Uh, so we may end up coming back to the city council. We still have another 500,000 that was allocated for a program for a tax rebate incentive. So there's some discussion on whether we want to move that into the senior program instead of a separate tax rebate program, uh, and then see if we wanted to add additional more to make up the remainder. Of it. So we're working through that, but in the meantime, any recommendations that you all have on that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I will have Zach send you all tomorrow the listing of all of the uh, locations uh, that have applied uh, for that, that program. Okay. Is there on the application again, to ask if there was veterans or how many veterans applied for this? We did not ask the veterans. We did, we did not, but we could pull if they've got a veteran exemption. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. questions for Lisa? It was a very popular program with 296 applications. Uh, there were there were certainly a lot, and uh, we wanted to try to accomplish as much as we can. So we probably will be coming back to City Council to ask for your feedback on how you think we should handle the remainder of the program. So. And as of right now, is there any uh, like the 20 people, the, le the least money, are probably going to be selected first? Is there any? Order after that is, is it uh, for disabled people, or is there any particular order that you're looking at? There's not an order yet because we obviously, similar to the roof program, we bet we're asking the city council for for uh, kind of advice on this process. Uh, but certainly, we have enough for those that would be in the lowest income bracket, uh, which is a, a high priority. Most of those items are, are high priority items that need to get done. Um, less those that will receive the roof grant, assuming that gets passed on Monday. So we're working through it. Hopefully we don't have to create a criteria that we can fund them all or a majority of them, but uh, obviously there's decisions that have to be made in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course. Uh, just make sure I got my list of items here. All right. Um, and then I do have for you all, and this crystal is behind me over here. I'm going to pass out the... Um, Another ARPA program for a not-for-profit assistance program. One of the, uh, and I'm just gonna preface this and I'll let Crystal jump in for whatever she would like. Sure. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, items that we received, we received a lot of requests and many of those have been presentations to this city council uh, for funding uh, for organizations that are in a not-for-profit capacity. As you may all, as you probably all note, uh, all of the ARPA programs that have been passed so far, none of them apply to not-for-profits, right? So none of them would apply to an allocation, for example, to the zone or to the Y or to any other program to the public market uh, that, that came in and presented to you all. Uh, so in an effort to uh, try to work through a program to present uh, and have funding, uh, even a small amount for some of those programs, uh, Crystal has created this not Nonprofit Assistance Program. I know Crystal's going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, sure. Um, it's very new. <laughs> so if there are errors, uh, let's just look at this as a draft. Um, and my hope is that we can have some discussion um, once you've had a chance to digest. Uh, this was developed based on conversation that I've had with the mayor and President Dulce and looking at what made the most sense to address those uh, organizations that have come and requested funding. Um, so that's where we pulled this together. We based a lot of it on um, the business grants that we've already had in development. So there's certainly some tweaking that can be done. Nothing here is set in stone. Um, 
we suggested that uh, 1.5 million be allocated to the program, uh, grants not exceed 200,000. Um, however, anything that might receive consideration for over 200,000 would be subject to a pilot agreement with the city. Um, details to be, uh, I guess, determined, finalized based on discussion that um, we might have. So really this is just um, introducing the program, uh, what costs would be eligible, what costs would be ineligible, um, what organizations would be eligible. It is specifically uh, designed for those nonprofit organizations. They would have to provide proof of that and provide all that financial background. And, um, and then the, the burden of proof uh, of their hardship, um, because that is what the American Rescue Plan funds are, are meant to address, um, would be on the organization that applies. So they would still subject to the same sort of criteria uh, that businesses and individuals are, are subject to. Um, so you could look at that matrix that I handed out earlier, still would need to look at that and use that as a foundation um, for any evaluation that would be given to any of the applications. So they would still need to meet those sorts of criteria and um, provide the background on why uh, the pandemic or how the pandemic impacted their organization, how they're going to use the funding to address um, their organization's recovery, um, and whatever sort of uh, issues that they're trying to address as a nonprofit organization that would benefit the community um, and uh, help assist the community in whatever ways that the individual organizations do um, to also aid in recovery from the pandemic. So. Thank you. So we were very, uh, we want to be very clear on one thing. We recognize the uh, comments from the city council and others on the fact that not-for-profits don't pay taxes, mm -hmm. right? That's been a big concern that we have heard and so if we're providing this money, which we're legally able to do the not-for-profits, uh, what, uh, what does the city get in return, uh, even though we're still providing services? So in discussion with Crystal and I, um, we said that if you do receive awards over 200,000, again, this is a draft form, we could talk about this a bit more, um, we would initiate a pilot program, which would mean you'd pay, the organization would pay, a percentage of what their tax burden would be as a not-for-profit, okay? So we initially had some discussion about 2.5% of what your tax bill uh, would normally have been uh, as a, as a not-for-profit, okay? So if you are taking funding over a certain amount of threshold, then there's some skin in the game uh, for the city, and the city would get some return back on the services it already provides uh, that organization. Yeah. And that organization would have to provide the justification and the background information for how, what our return on that investment would be based on whatever services they're providing or whatever additional economic benefit it would provide. So they, they would be required to provide that quantification um, as part of their application. The only comment, looking through the that organizations that have already gotten PPP loans, you said that they're not, um, that they are still eligible to apply, but I guess I would put them down in a lower category sure. if they've already yep. gotten funding, because many got PPP loans that were forgiven, so they really got the funds, where you got others that maybe were too small to apply, mm -hmm. and didn't get, and However you're ranking, I think those organizations that did not get it, if they're going to extend this to not-for-profits, sure. give it to those who have not been able to take advantage of these other funding opportunities. Put them in a higher ranking, I guess. I'm, you know, uh, it just, I think it would be more fair. Yep, it's a good absolutely. Point. Yeah, Excellent. Know, yep, so we'll make sure that we, we add that into whatever the final Read through it. Yep. Uh, 
Um, Some comments, questions. suggestions, yep. Yep, so like all the other programs, uh, di digest it, we'll follow up uh, in, a, in a bit uh, with it for additional comments and thoughts. Like I said, we, you know, Chris, Crystal worked a tremendous amount on trying to put this together. Uh, and so we both put our heads together and said, what is one way we can ensure that we're at least getting some back uh, from the programs? Um, we recognize that there's a huge community benefit for some of the work that these organizations are doing, uh, but there is some potential to recoup some of the services that the city also provides. Can you take a question from the I have a question. I've got a question. Yeah. Are you going to look at their finances of these organizations too, yes. in terms of fund balance and also viability? Yes, absolutely. Okay, because I think they've got a significant amount of funds and they're just looking for yeah. Yep. We would be looking at that. We'd be looking at what is the, their proposed project or program that they want to apply for funding for. Is there a business plan of sorts okay. associated with that? They'd be required to jump through the same kinds of hoops that we we put businesses through. No, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Rationale for any of this funding that is going and they're reasonable and that they've exhausted all of the options. Yep, absolutely. For one who spent a lot of time with the American Rescue Plan as a citizen, I still am doing that. I still get communications from the Department of Treasury. Um, when you're dealing with not for profits under the guidelines and the regs, there's got to be a delineation. The city is the recipient. Then they have sub-recipients. That's correct. Then they have beneficiaries. Also correct. All of that has, been, has to be linked together mm -hmm. to justify the investment That's in correct. not for profits. Give you a quick example. The food kitchen. You need a new kitchen. They are a sub-recipient. The people that eat there the directly connected to that soup kitchen are the recipients. That's correct, yes. It should not be a profit margin that establishes the necessity or the qualifications of use in American Rescue Fund. In other words, if they charge a mission to participate in the organization, that's a question mark. So if I want to go and belong, I pay a fee to belong. That has to be carefully analyzed in terms of justification on eligibility criteria. We can certainly look into it, Doug, and to, uh, to be honest, every grant recipient also signs a grant agreement with the city that delineate, delineates them as a sub-recipient, assigns them a DUNS identification number if they don't have one, uh, and they have separate reporting requirements in addition to the city's reporting requirements to the treasury. So those things are already happening. I understand your, your concern about admission and we certainly will take that into account as we start to look at some of these programs. Uh, I have uh, no other general items, uh, but I do have uh, one, uh, or excuse me, I have uh, three executive session items, one relating to an active law enforcement investigation and two personnel items. Mr. Mayor, may I just ask one yeah. question, please? Of course. I see Ellen's here in the audience. And Ellen, any uh, word on the attendance or the program for retooling uh, 2000? Can you give us a little update on that? Thank you, Mr. Um, we are working very hard at uh, meeting our goal of over 300 to come to Jamestown for this conference. Right now, we're looking at about 50. It's mm -hmm. early. Um, we expect
one comment on that. The LDC gave fifty thousand dollars to the BPU to do this conference. Fifty thousand dollars. The BPU, other than attending a online session, the cost to attend is either one hundred twenty-five or two hundred fifty dollars. And you gave them fifty thousand dollars to put this on. I don't think that's correct. I believe there's free in, there's free admission to those that participate in the webinars. Is that what, correct, Al? The webinar. Yes. The webinar. You put sure. it, yeah. They put a condition yeah. that you have to look at the webinar. Some have already passed. But the average citizen who wouldn't understand the language or the connectivity to the webinar will not be able to attend this because the price is two hundred and fifty dollars. I, I disagree with you, Doug. I, I think if if a BPU customer wanted to call the BPU and, and attend because they had a general interest, I'm sure the BPU would entertain it. But even then, if you watch the webinars that are pre-recorded uh, and you spend, what, the two hours to watch the two webinars and you can get in for free, that's not a bad deal. No, it isn't a good deal. I'm not gonna argue with you, but I, I'm just answering, <coughs> I'm answering what you're saying. So thank you, Alan. <coughs> I, what was the other two? I'm sorry. It was one I one had one. Uh, two personnel. Two personnel, one law enforcement. Or was that one the same one? The yes. same one. Yes. So it's two personnel, person. contractual. Whatever. Two personnel. Two personnel. One law enforcement. All right. I said it's the personnel or contractual. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no action to be taken. All right. So I have a motion. So All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.